Love is a strange thing. Some people go their whole life without ever finding it. For me, however, I fell in love the second I saw a ridiculous three-wheel contraption piloted by two men with more courage than common sense. It was love at first sight, and I knew that getting to see these things just once was completely unacceptable. Thankfully for me, my last video made quite the impression on two sidecar racers. I received an offer from them to get unrestricted access to see what it takes to pilot one of these incredible machines, and who could say no to that? The next race was at East Fortune Race Circuit, so I got my filming equipment together and hit the road, and after a quick stop to do some nature watching, I arrived at the circuit to meet the gentleman kind enough to invite me here. So who are these mad men? First off, we have the driver, Graham. Graham is a postman by day, with a keen interest in bumblebees. He's also the mechanic for the team, and spends a lot of his time in between races, fixing and tuning the sidecar. Although he's a bit shy in front of the camera, he's far from it behind the handlebars, showing his skill and bravery at every turn. Next up is David, the co-pilot. He's an incredibly kind and funny man, with almost as much compassion and empathy in him as pot noodles. He's a prison officer who works with inmates teaching them life skills and passing on his knowledge of joinery. As much as he loves a laugh and a joke, he's deadly serious when he steps into that sidecar and uses all his strength and agility to keep that thing on three wheels. The two of them have known each other since they were six years old and grew up in the same small town together. So, how long have you guys known each other? Since 1986, uh, when you moved to Hatton, didn't it? Yeah, I moved to Hatton. Uh, and that's when trouble began. <laughs> Do you think that helps your racing performance, the fact you know, you know each other so well? Yeah, like brothers, are we? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm closer to David than I am to my own brother. I'm the same. Because my own brother lives... He lives in the city of Aberdeen, I live outside the city. I see you more than my own brother, and he stays a few doors down from me. <laughs> so... Uh, but, uh, it's, it's that element of trust as well. Aye. You know, you can trust somebody to be on the right place in the bike, but that's different to trusting somebody out with racing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we just generally we've got a very, a very close friendship and we, we trust each other. One of those on the bike, I've never actually thought about having to trust you, it's just there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is one more member of this team I've yet to introduce, and that is the sidecar itself. This is an F2 sidecar that Graham and David run in the Scottish Sidecar Racing Championship. Sidecars are separated into F1 and F2 classes, the F2 being more light and nimble, and the F1 being heavier but more powerful with its 1000cc engine. Graham and David's F2 is powered by a tuned 2007 Suzuki GSX-R600 engine. Despite looking similar, every sidecar is unique as most of the parts are handmade as there are rarely off-the-shelf parts for these machines. I asked Graham to give me a tour round to see exactly what this thing is made of. These tyres are made by Avon. This one is a 9 inch wide slick. The front tyre is a 7.2 inch slick. It's all 13 inch wheels. And the sidecar is also a 7.2. You can run wider tyres on certain bikes. Formula ones, they run much wider tyres. Um, the wet tyres are over here. Again, you can see they're heavily treaded and very, very soft rubber. You can actually leave a fingernail print in it. Brakes, we have one brake on the back, one brake on the sidecar. Under here are the master cylinders. There's two master cylinders. One controls the sidecar wheel and the back wheel. And in the front, 280mm discs, one at each side. The other master cylinder controls a caliper on each side, and we've got what we call a paddock brake, which controls this caliper here. The engine in this bike is a, it's out of a 2000, sorry about the noise, it's out of a 2006 GS, around about 2006 GSXR 600, it's a K7 engine. It's got a race Yoshimura ECU controlling it and it revs to about 16,000 revs per minute. The cooling system for the engine, as you can see, is, is quite a big radiator. It's running a, a standard water pump, which pumps in the coolant through the radiator back through the engine. It's, it's actually really simple, the cooling system, because the more basic it is, the less likely it is to fail. 
this is the expansion tank, which is a good bit smaller than you would find on a road bike. But we check it every, well, what, 13 miles, so it's not really got much chance to use much water. Yeah. The steering runs a, a leading link fork setup, which is, this is all you can run, that's the regulations. Twin shocks, you've got ride height adjustment, spring preload adjustment, damping adjustment. How do you <laughs> tell how much fuel's in this thing? Um, we, this is a very scientific method that me and my passenger have come up with. We've got the fuel cap, fuel cap comes off, and we've got our dipstick. So we dip the tank, pull it out, and we know by where it's wet to how much fuel's in it. As you can see, there's 10 litres of fuel in it. How, much, how long will that last yet? That last, that would last two sessions. We use about five litres per session. Over the course of the weekend, I got to experience the highs and lows of racing, with the first struggle being Graham trying to tune out some understeer they had been experiencing. We're still trying to get the suspension dialed in to suit our combination of weights, obviously because he's a lot bigger than me, he's on the back. The problem we're having is corner exit. We try to come out of the corner and try to get the throttle on. It's putting too much weight down on the back and lifting the front and we just, it breaks the traction in the front tyre and the bike just wants to, to run wide so I then have to roll the throttle off and then gradually get back on it until the bike's pointing straight and then I can just give it full throttle. Something I can feel in the back as well so again, if we're going to the right mic position can affect it as well. I mean it's kind of fun but it's not very fast. <laughs> so now we know how these things work, let's hear about how to ride it. Starting off with the track itself. East Fortune Race Circuit is built on a former RAF airfield, which gives it its signature high-speed straights. The former airbase's motto was Fortune Favours the Brave, which I think fits its modern use quite well. I asked Graham and David's neighbour, a highly experienced sidecar racer, to run me through a lap of the track. Ian Sur, or Suits for short, has driven a passenger at this track long enough to know his way around. <laughs> Snakes, a challenge, sort of, sort of coming out of railway bends, because there's two, two, two bends which become one, really. In fact, it's actually three bends which become one, because you go out, you win, you take the, the turn in, and you'll drift out, and you'll be trying to come back to the second, it's actually no, it's the second right, and then turning left at Snake, and go round that, and you're on it, and then you're up and over and down to the S's. So S's 1, S's 2, which are actually the Cooperman S's that are called. Right. So that's a challenge, because it's your, your, you're moving, you're really moving going through the S's. And again, it's a transition for the passenger, from being on the right, going into the first turn, to immediately transition to the left, to try and get the outfit round that left hand turn yeah. without flipping over. Head down to the hairpin, anchors on, round the hairpin, to right hand turn, up, and then the next challenge is Hannah's, which is the chicane. So you go into it and it's actually a slight kink to the left, eh, to the right, but I actually almost sort of straight line it and don't really bother turning right as such. Eh, but you turn left, sharp left, and again it's a challenge for the passenger to get from the left to the right to get around and on to the start finish again over the finishing line. I was starting to understand the track, and having raced go-karts in the past, it was all starting to make sense to me. That was right up until the moment David offered me some one-on-one -on -one coaching on how to be a passenger. Fair to say that despite how easy these guys make it look, it's far from it. Okay, so what works for one passenger might not necessarily work for another. Okay. So what I find the comfiest position for me to go in, my right foot is the block there like so. Okay. Hold my knee in. With my left hand and this handle, the left hand doesn't come off. The handle on the right there. Some guys like to hook their foot around the back, but what I find is comfy is I can tuck my foot in here for going down the streets. Myself nice and tight, down low, you can take this arm in if necessary, down, I think works. 
like for me, it's across the back of where I'm walking the arm. Down like this, down the streets. Yep. And once in a while, just look up to see where my marker point is for me to move. So the left hand comes up to the top. Push off the block at the back using this handle here. This foot goes down into the corner of the wheel arch. I've got handles on this side to reach for. And as we explained earlier, with issues with the front end of the rim, I'm trying to get my body on the eyes and back again. I can position my hand on this handle here. This leg takes the weight off the back so it pushes down on the block there and it interferes with the clip at the front. Transition to the left, let's do it in reverse, drop down, roll on my knees, hand stays on the handle here. This one grips on the top, get myself into the wheel arch. The right foot is against the body of the right like so, and the left foot I hook under the back of the chair. And for positioning, I find getting my butt cheek more or less in the centre of the chair wheel works for us. So I'm holding on like this round the corner. Duck down, I can act as a windbreak. Again, roll up onto the knees, hand across the right handle. Just drop myself down and straight. Okay. Want to give it a shot? Yeah, yeah. My turn now, I guess. Now, despite how easy David made that look, I was about to find out just how difficult passengering a sidecar really is. Okay. okay, so left foot in there, is that right? No, right foot. Right foot. Yeah. So I'm already <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so right, right foot. So we'll start with the... Left hand on here. Left hand on here. Yeah. The bottom or... I think, for me, is there. Okay. Okay, get your right hand to here. Just get your body positioned. So, so tuck your knees in. Put this one down. Down. Yeah. Tuck your knees right in, get your body as low as you can, head tucked in. So that's down the straights? Yeah, I would look down at Graham's feet, you can see the brake pedal. Yeah. Occasionally glance up to see my marker point. Okay. So if you're transitioning right, push off with the chalk at the back, okay. pull yourself across, don't remove your left hand but move it up to the top of the handle. Slide your hand along the fairing, you'll see the white line, there's a hand grip there. Pull yourself up. Yeah. Up higher, so you're above Graham. Yeah. Reach for the next handle. And then this one over the back? No. Put that one against the wheel arch. That's it there. And lift the other one. There you go. That takes the weight off the back of the bike. Now go to this one. If necessary, aye. Try and get yourself as high as you can just to keep that grip in the front. So to move to the left, just opposite. I find slight back in the handles as quick as you can. Roll on your knees. Both sets of knees. You can do it, it's a slow motion. <laughs> okay, so feet out the back, back here. feet out the back. So both of them? Both of them, yeah. Okay. Roll on your knees. Yeah. And your right foot goes against here. Yeah, you're doing it right. Slide your left hand down at the same time. The right hand grips the top of the handle. Okay. At the same time, your right foot goes there. Left foot hooked under the back here. Okay. Get your butt out the side. Okay. Yeah. Push it out as far as you can if necessary, but as I say, what works for us is getting my butt cheek in line with the centre of the chair wheel. Right, okay. okay. That is you. Sweet. Oh man, you have to be flexible for this, Jesus. It's a workout. <laughs> it's an enjoyable workout, We're but it's a workout. Still, I'm shattered. <laughs> I'm always buzzing by the time you come off the track. It's the it's the rolling that I really struggled with. I don't the the pulling back that was fine, but then going well, from that side to kind of like quite, moving to around here. When you're out the track, the way I describe it is you're a part of the bike, so I just kind of feel what the bike's doing and I go with it. I adjust myself accordingly. I feel the brake in. I feel the G's. I just move with that. I sound a bit samurai, but I'm in one with the bike. <laughs> right. That's enough talking. Let's see some racing. If you look closely here, you'll see some friends of the channel, Carl and Connor from TWH Motorsports, getting a great start from the moment.
This shot is just as they come over the hill that Ian was talking about, into the fast and flowing horses. Now here we see a banging overtake on an F1 sidecar, truly extraordinary from an F2. And if you look closely, you can see Graham fighting the understeer he was talking about earlier as well. You can see he's having to hold off the throttle right until the very exit of the corner, and then off they go. The announcer for this race kindly let me steal his spot for this beautiful view all the way from the airplane down to turn one. When I spoke to the guys at the start of the weekend, I asked them what their fastest time at the track was, and all weekend they seemed determined to beat it. We got 115.3 in qualifying. It felt faster than that, but I'm not going to complain. So you're trying to beat your best at the moment, so 114. 114.3s. And I'm delighted to say that in the last race of the weekend, they smashed that personal best. They were setting a blistering pace, and they could have easily made it into the 112s, if not for a red flag shortening the session. Now as beautifully as David and Graham piloted their sidecar, I think I have to give the award for most entertaining to watch to our old friends from TWH Motorsports. Carl was on an absolute mission in that last race, putting Daniel Ricciardo to shame with his late braking. I mentioned this in the first video of this series, but I still just cannot get over how good these things sound. Feel free to call me crazy here, but the sound seriously reminds me of the good old V8 Formula 1 cars. Listen to this and tell me what you think in the comments. One thing that really amazed me about sidecar racing is the community. Over the course of the weekend I got to know so many of the sidecar drivers and I was pleasantly surprised by how close of a community it is. The drivers saw the people they were racing against not as competitors but as family. In one of the last races Graham and David were in a fight the whole race against another sidecar a few doors up from them. Immediately after they got back to the paddock they came over and all had a big laugh about it. I've just never seen another motorsport with this level of respect and sportsmanship. Anyway, that's uh, all from me, but I just wanted to say a big thanks to Graham and David, obviously, for having me over in the first place. Um, and then his neighbour, Boris, and his lovely wife, who kept me fed all weekend, um, were constantly feeding me pies, burgers, cans of iron brew, all sorts. Uh, obviously a big shout out to Ian Sutter for his interview and for his commentary. It, he was a great laugh to be around. Uh, and just the whole sidecar community in general. They were all just really nice. From the second I walked into the paddock, uh, first thing on a Saturday morning, people were saying hello to me and offering me drinks and all this sort of stuff. It was really, really nice atmosphere. I also just want to make a little shout out to Team ARC, for the onboard footage, um, that was nice of them to let me use that. 
Also, just wanted to give a massive shout out to the marshals and the staff at East Fortune. Uh, they're all doing an amazing job keeping this motorsport alive and kicking. And just, yeah, thanks so much to all of you. P.S. Uh, Graham and David, sorry it took me this so long to put this video out. When I said the end of June, I meant like the end of June next year. So I'm actually like early. Stop. <laughs>